Hi, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we're going to do a little bit of work here to the front of the Mini. I want to refit the grill with the grill buttons that I had fitted previously um, with a little bit of a modification. But first, a little bit of a debate. Um, as you see, I've painted the section inside the grill aperture uh, black. Now, this is a bit of a, I wouldn't say maybe hotly debated, but it is debated around the original uh, Cooper S uh, community. Uh, as you know, I'm building the Traveller as a Cooper S Traveller. So I'm slowly adding Cooper S, um, Cooper S eyes to sections to it. Um, so I still have the chrome around the doors. That'll be coming in the future. But I wanted to try to determine whether this should have a black grill insert. Um, another thing I still have to do as well, I need to change over the upright to the diagonal one so I can fit a, an oil cooler at a later date. But yes, back to the black. So um, I've seen a number of photos, original photos of Cooper S's uh, back in, in period some well, you know, with the grills missing and you can see that they have had uh, black painted some are color coded um, i've had uh, been researching this i've asked on number of a number of forums mark one mini forums and cooper forums and come back with varying varying answers yes they should definitely be black they should definitely not be black austin said black morris's had black um, and so on so um, whether or not it's right or not, I think it looks good on the car. So if you're looking through the grill, the Cooper grill has a slot so you can see in through it a little bit better. Um, so you're going to see the uprights and so on, but then whenever they're color coded, but if you paint them black, it hides them. So um, I think it looks quite good. So I've done that. So back on the topic today. Um, originally, when I had the grill fitted with the grill buttons, the grill buttons were fitted about here and here. So they're actually behind the overriders a little bit. So you couldn't really see them, and they're a little bit awkward to get at if you needed to go out. So what I then did was I got a piece of perforated metal strip that I basically screwed across the front. It wasn't very sightly at all, although you don't really see it. Uh, but if the grill was out for any reason, it was a pain to try to get it out of the way if I want to change the oil or whatever, because um, I was in the row for getting the, the oil filter removal to it in. So what I did, that allowed me then to put the, um, the grill buttons further inboard, so then what I've done now is got panels made, which then go in here and they will uh, push them a bit further out. So I'll show you those now. Okay, so these are the little panels that I've got made up. So I started off, I made a, a cardboard template. And uh, so I've marked up exactly where those, the, the intake uh, on the uh, passenger side, I've marked that position. And um, so the, the edge of the grill panel is roughly about there. Again, roughly about there. So I'm sitting it out about an inch and a half, or two inches or so, uh, further into the into the grill aperture. So I made these, like I said, in cardboard. I gave them to uh, a fabricator friend of mine, Pete from Brookland Fabrication or Brookfab, um, and he made these out in alloy for me. Uh, also added the dimple dies uh, to them there as well. So that'll still keep the airflow going through in um, as well. So I don't want to restrict the airflow too much. I was a little space left here and here for uh, drilling to put the uh, grill buttons in. So again, here's my grill buttons here that I had fitted previously. So that'll sit in abruptly about there on each on each one. So next thing I really do, I, so I give them a color of black so they'll match in with the uh, the grill insert um, as well. So I've uh, I've pre-drilled them, um, ready for pop riveting. I wasn't able to get black pop rivets uh, unfortunately, so I have to go back and touch up. Um, the heads as well. So uh, next step is to get these fitted to the car. Okay, so there is the passenger side one fitted and see so they have the, the speed holes um, obviously on the dimple died so that allows still allow the airflow in towards the radiator. They still have left the existing duct there which currently isn't being used but it's there. Um, and again on this side still have the airflow going through there and uh, not as necessary but um, still put it on anyway, so I say the original panel would have been roughly about here, and again, roughly about here. So my next job is to fit the moustache. Okay, so there's the moustache, pop it back on, um, and actually what I did as well um, off camera was I drilled the holes for the um, for the grill buttons to go through. Um, so I did that off camera, um, I'm glad I did it because I actually took the paint off, uh, when the heat built up, it uh, popped paint off the uh, alloy because, uh, yeah, me being me, I forgot to prime it. So, yeah, next thing to do is um, just to fit 
the grill uh, using the grill buttons. So we'll go to the next step is how we fit the grill buttons. Okay, so fitting the grill button couldn't be any simpler. There's simply just a bolt and a nut. You may need uh, to pack out, you may need to pack out the washer a little bit, just depending on your application and the type of grill you have fitted, of course. So uh, the first thing to do is simply slot in from the far side, obviously with the washer, on through, and need the washer on the other side. If I can find where I put it, just talk amongst yourselves while I try to find the washer. And we'll set it down here somewhere. Ah, here we go. Okay, so then washer and the nut. Okay, and, and the ones I have are 11 mil. So, excuse the noise if you hear there, my dog has decided to come over with his toy and looking to play. So he's stuck in the middle here as well. Okay, I'll take your toy outside, Louis. Away you go. Okay, so that is basically the first one on. So then, uh, I'll just show you with the one here. So, um, if we have the two on, it just slots in through the grill. You then put your little rubber uh, grommet on, and then the button itself, and it just whizzes up tight. And we may or may not need a packer. Actually, I think we're okay in this point. So that's bringing that one up nice and tight. Don't need any extra packers with um, with uh, washers, so I think we are good on that front. So just need to do the other side, and that's that job done. Okay, that's that job done. Grill buttons are now fitted. Grill is secured, and I did add a couple of extra screws just in time to just stop a bit of vibration. So, yeah, that's another job scored off the list. Okay, so that's another really quick job, uh, just off the list. A little bit of modification, a wee bit of customization, and always looks really good. So thanks very much to Pete from Brookfab for rattling up those uh, little panels for me. So it was a great job. So and they they work really well. So cheers for that, mate. Um. So yeah, grill's done. All you do now, tidy all this mess up, and pull the mini forward. Um. Because on the next next job I'm going to look at now is Dad's on his way over here, uh, and we're going to uh, take a look and see. What modifications need to be done to fit the tow bar that I got? So, yeah, so that's going to be an interesting, uh, interesting bit as well. So there will be some uh, tow bar uh, videos coming up um, sometime in the future as well. So I'm not sure when, uh, just whenever we get around to get it um, on and fitted and finished. And I'll do one video showing the whole process. So, yep, yeah, thanks very much for watching. Remember to give it a thumbs up. Uh, remember to subscribe. And I'd love to hear uh, your comments as well uh, down below. So. Yep, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.